It was 3 a.m. when Alex heard the unmistakable sound of his school locker being slammed shut, echoing through the darkness of his room. This wasn't the first time the nightmares about school bullies had invaded his sleep, but tonight was different. The air felt heavier, and the shadows in his room seemed to whisper his name. In his dream, Alex found himself walking the deserted school hallways, the fluorescent lights flickering above. The usual cacophony of laughing and chattering students was replaced by an eerie silence, broken only by the distant sound of footsteps following him. Turning around, there was never anyone there, yet the feeling of being watched was overwhelming. As he approached his locker, the numbers on the combination lock began to spin wildly on their own. Finally, coming to a stop, the locker creaked open to reveal not the books and papers he had left, but a dark, seemingly endless void. From this darkness, a hand emerged, grabbing his shirt and pulling him towards the abyss. Alex tried to scream, but no sound came out. Just as he felt himself being swallowed by the darkness, he woke up, gasping for air. His room was quiet, but a cold draft made him shiver. That's when he noticed it. His bedroom window, previously shut, was now wide open, the curtains billowing in the wind. On the sill sat a familiar object that sent chills down his spine. His school ID, which he had lost months ago, long before the bullying started. Puzzled and frightened, Alex got up to close the window, but a shadow in the corner of the room caught his eye. It was too large to be his, and as it moved, it seemed to be creeping closer. The air around him grew colder, and the faint sound of whispers filled the room, echoing the taunts and jeers of his school bullies. But how could this be? He was alone, wasn't he? As the shadow loomed larger, the whispers became more distinct, repeating a name over and over. It wasn't his name, but one he recognized all too well, the name of the main bully who tormented him at school. The realization hit Alex like a wave of ice-cold water. Something or someone from the school was here, in his room, at 3 a.m. With his heart pounding in his chest, Alex backed away from the advancing shadow. The whispers grew louder, and the room seemed to close in on him. He could now make out the words among the whispers, phrases he'd heard during the day, twisted into sinister threats. The shadow seemed to feed on his fear growing larger and more defined, taking on the form of the school bully who had made his days a living nightmare. As the figure stepped into the moonlight streaming through the window, its features became clearer. It was an exact, albeit distorted, replica of the bully, but its eyes were hollow, soulless pits, and its smile was wide and malicious. Alex wanted to run, but his legs wouldn't move. He was frozen in place by fear. The figure spoke in a voice that was both familiar and terrifyingly foreign, dripping with malice. Missed me, Alex, it taunted, taking slow, deliberate steps toward him. The room filled with the sound of other lockers slamming shut, echoing around him, as if the nightmare of school had invaded his home. In a desperate bid for safety, Alex managed to stumble towards his bedroom door, flinging it open, only to find the hallway transformed into the school corridor he dreaded. Lockers lined the walls, their doors rhythmically opening and closing with no one in sight. The fluorescent lights flickered above, casting strange shadows that twisted and turned like writhing serpents. He ran down the hallway, the sound of his footsteps echoing loudly, mixing with the distance.
distant, mocking laughter of unseen bullies. Doors to classrooms swung open as he passed, revealing glimpses of moments when he felt most helpless and humiliated. Desks and chairs were upturned, and graffiti-covered walls displayed cruel messages aimed at him. As he reached the end of the corridor, he found himself at the entrance of the school gym, the site of many of his humiliations. The doors swung open on their own, revealing the dark, empty space inside. The only light came from the moon shining through the skylights, casting an eerie glow over the basketball court. The whispers were now deafening, and as Alex stepped into the gym, they suddenly stopped. In the silence, the sound of a bouncing basketball echoed, growing louder and closer. A figure emerged from the shadows, dribbling the ball. A twisted version of another of his tormentors. Its face, a grotesque mask of glee. Alex turned to flee, but found the gym doors had vanished, replaced by solid walls. The only way out was through the locker rooms, notorious for being the bully's favorite spot for their cruel games. He could hear the sound of showers running and the laughter of his tormentors, as if they were waiting for him inside. Stealing himself, Alex moved towards the locker rooms, each step heavier than the last, his heart racing with dread. The door creaked open, revealing the steam-filled room, the sound of water and cruel laughter growing louder. As he stepped inside, the door slammed shut behind him, trapping him in the nightmare. The steam in the shower area began to form shapes, twisting into the figures of his bullies. Their features exaggerated and menacing. They stepped out of the mist, surrounding him, their laughter piercing the air. Trapped and surrounded, Alex felt a surge of panic as the figures advanced toward him, their faces twisted into cruel smirks. They echoed the worst of his memories. Each step they took, fueled by his fear, the steam thickened, obscuring his vision, making the room feel smaller, more oppressive. Their laughter mixed with the hissing of the showers created a cacophony of horror that threatened to overwhelm him. Suddenly, the lights flickered and went out, plunging the locker room into darkness. Alex could only hear the sound of his own rapid breathing and the relentless approach of his tormentors. In the pitch black, he felt isolated, as if cut off from the world outside this nightmare. The bully's voices became indistinct, melding into a single, ominous drone. Just as he felt a hand grasp his shoulder, the lights blazed back on, revealing not the bullies, but empty space. The steam had cleared, and the locker room was silent and deserted. Confusion and fear battled within him as he tried to understand what was real and what was a product of his terror-stricken mind. Forcing himself to move, Alex found an exit door that seemed to appear out of nowhere. He pushed it open, stumbling into the cold night air. The school grounds were unrecognizable, shrouded in a thick fog that seemed to swallow the light. The familiar paths and buildings were gone, replaced by a twisted maze of shadows and shapes that moved just beyond the edge of vision. Alex felt drawn towards the school's old, abandoned building, a place rumored to be haunted, even during the day. Now, it loomed before him, its broken windows like dark eyes watching his every move. The air grew colder as he approached, and the whispers returned, now chanting a dire warning, urging him to turn back something compelled him to move forward, 
as if the answers to his torment lay within those crumbling walls. As he entered the building, the door slammed shut behind him, the sound echoing through empty halls. Inside, the atmosphere was thick with despair, the air heavy with the scent of decay. Graffiti-covered walls seemed to mock him with distorted faces, and the remnants of old school equipment were scattered around, covered in dust and cobwebs. Moving deeper into the building, Alex heard the faint sound of a piano playing from somewhere above. The melody was haunting, filled with sorrow and a strange familiarity. He followed the sound, climbing the rotting staircase, each step creaking ominously under his weight. The music guided him to an old music room, where the dilapidated piano played itself, the keys moving in a ghostly dance. Drawn to the piano, Alex reached out to touch it, but before his fingers could make contact, the music stopped abruptly, and the oppressive silence returned. He turned to leave, but the door through which he had entered was no longer there. Instead, he faced a corridor he had never seen before, lined with doors that seemed to breathe, pulsing in and out with a life of their own. Hearing a noise behind him, he turned to see the shadows coalesce into the forms of his bullies, their features even more monstrous and distorted. They began to advance down the corridor, their footsteps echoing ominously. Alex ran, opening doors only to find brick walls or more corridors behind them. The building, a labyrinth designed to confuse and terrify. As he navigated the endless halls, the line between reality and nightmare blurred further. The school's history, steeped in rumors of bullying, tragedy, and unresolved anguish, seemed to come alive, playing out its darkest moments. The Alex's breaths came in ragged gasps as he fled through the ever-changing corridors of the old building. The relentless pursuit of his nightmarish tormentors drove him deeper into the heart of the structure, where the air was thick with the weight of unspoken horrors. The building seemed alive, its very essence infused with the anguish and despair of those who had suffered within its walls. Each room he passed was a tableau of torment frozen moments of anguish from different eras, all eerily similar to his own experiences. Desks arranged in a circle with an empty chair in the middle, blackboards scrawled with taunts, lockers ajar with ominous darkness within. The building was not just a place, but a living memory of every act of cruelty that had occurred there. In his frantic escape, Alex stumbled upon an old library, its shelves groaning under the weight of moldy books, the air filled with the musty smell of decayed paper. The whispers here were louder, almost pleading, as if the books themselves were desperate to be heard. On a table lay a newspaper clipping from years ago, detailing a tragic incident where a bullied student vanished without a trace. The photo showed a boy with a haunting resemblance to Alex. Hearing the echoes of footsteps, Alex hid behind a bookshelf, peering through the gaps. The distorted figures of his bullies searched the room, their eyes glowing unnaturally in the dim light. They spoke in disjointed voices, each sentence a jumble of words that seemed both threatening and sad. Escaping the library, Alex found himself in the gymnasium's forgotten counterpart, an older, decrepit version filled with discarded sports equipment and banners that time had forgotten. The center of the room held a boxing ring under a solitary spotlight, where shadowy figures sparred silently, repeating the same movements over and over, locked 
in an eternal conflict. As he moved through the gym, the air grew colder, and his breath formed clouds in front of him. The echoes of past matches filled the room. The sound of gloves striking flesh. The cheers of the crowd. The cries of the defeated. The shadows seemed to play out the worst of the school's history. Each scene more violent and tragic than the last. A sudden chill made Alex turn, and through a cracked mirror on the wall, he saw not his own reflection, but a multitude of faces, all stepping onto the creaking boards of the stage. Alex felt every eye in the auditorium on him, the weight of their silent expectation pressing down. The noose above him swayed gently, as if stirred by an unseen wind, its shadow on the floor twisting like a dark serpent. The spotlight intensified, casting his shadow across the auditorium, elongating it until it merged with the darkness at the room's edges. The air in the auditorium thickened, and a palpable tension filled the space. Whispers echoed off the walls, growing louder, forming a chorus of voices from the school's past. They spoke of hidden truths and buried pain, each word resonating with the energy of unresolved tragedies. As the whispers crescendoed, the figures in the audience began to stand, one by one, their movements synchronized and deliberate. They turned their heads towards the back of the auditorium, where the double doors burst open, revealing a gust of wind that carried with it the decaying leaves and cold air of forgotten autumns. Through the doorway, a figure emerged, distinct from the others, its presence commanding silence. It was the headmaster of the old school, his visage stern and eyes burning with a cold fire, dressed in period attire that spoke of the school's early days. He walked down the aisle, his steps measured and echoing in the silent auditorium until he stood before the stage, looking up at Alex with an inscrutable expression. The headmaster's voice, when he spoke, was deep and resonant, filling the room with a sonorous power that seemed to make the very air tremble. He spoke of the school's legacy, a place of learning shadowed by sorrow and darkness, where the echo of every harsh word and cruel deed had soaked into the stone and timber, creating a tapestry of pain. The stage beneath Alex began to transform, the floorboards splitting and rising, forming shapes and scenes from the school's history. These were not mere illusions, but seemed all too real, as if time itself were unraveling to reveal the layers of stories hidden beneath the present. Scenes of past injustices played out in harrowing detail showing how the cycle of bullying and violence had perpetuated through generations, each act leaving a deeper scar on the school's soul. As the headmaster continued to speak, the scenes became more intense, and Alex found himself reliving not just his own experiences, but those of former students, feeling their fear, anger, and despair, as if they were his own. The boundaries between past and present blurred further, and he realized that the school, with its long and troubled history, had become a nexus of suffering, drawing in those who bore the weight of its dark legacy. Suddenly, the spotlight on Alex intensified, blinding him. When his vision cleared, he was no longer on the stage, but standing in a replica of his own classroom, facing the shadowy figures of his bullies. 
However, now they appeared not as the monsters of his nightmares, but as mere children, their faces twisted not by malice, but by fear and confusion. Behind them, like puppeteers, were the figures of adults, their features obscured and menacing, manipulating the children into repeating the cycle of cruelty and fear. The headmaster's voice echoed through this tableau, explaining that the true horror of the school was not the acts of the students, but the failure of the adults to break the cycle, to transform the school from a place of fear to one of nurturing and growth. The school's tragedy, he revealed, was not in its haunted halls or spectral figures, but in the lost potential of every child turned tormentor or victim by the neglect of those who should have guided them. As this revelation sank in, the classroom faded, and Alex found himself back in the auditorium, alone on the stage, with the noose still swinging gently above him. The figures in the audience had vanished, leaving only the empty seats and the echo of the headmaster's words. The doors at the back of the auditorium stood open, revealing the first light of dawn, casting long shadows across the floor. With a heavy heart, Alex stepped down from the stage, his mind reeling with the night's revelations. As he walked towards the open doors, the school behind him seemed to grow silent, as if holding its breath. The nightmare was over, but the real journey, the struggle to confront and end the cycle of bullying, was just beginning. As he stepped out into the cold morning air, the school, now just a building, stood silent behind him, its windows reflecting the first light of the new day, waiting for the future to rewrite its legacy. As Alex left the ominous embrace of the school, the dawn's early light seemed to cleanse the night's horrors from his mind. Yet, the echo of the headmaster's revelations lingered, a silent whisper that trailed his every step. The world outside the school's boundary appeared unchanged, but to Alex, everything seemed different, as if he was seeing it all for the first time through eyes opened by his nightmarish journey. Walking through the streets as the city slowly awoke, he saw the remnants of night's shadows retreat before the encroaching daylight. The ordinary sights and sounds of morning felt surreal, a stark contrast to the darkness he had escaped. His mind was a whirlwind of thoughts, trying to piece together the reality of his experiences with the history of the school and the legacy of pain it harbored. Upon reaching his home, the familiarity of his surroundings did little to comfort him. The events of the night hung over him like a dark cloud, casting a shadow over the normalcy of his room, his things, his very life. Alex realized that while he might have left the school, the school had not entirely left him. The memories, the fear, and the resolve stirred by the night's ordeal were now part of him, an indelible mark on his soul. Compelled by a newfound purpose, Alex turned to his computer, his fingers hesitantly hovering over the keyboard. He began to document everything he remembered from the night. The vivid nightmares, the surreal journey through the school, and the chilling encounter with the headmaster. As he typed, the events took on a clearer shape, forming a narrative that was both a confession and a call to action. He posted his story online, not just as a cathartic release, but as a beacon for others who might have suffered similar ordeals. The responses were immediate and overwhelming. 
others began sharing their experiences, their stories echoing Alex's in their themes of fear, isolation, and the desperate need for change. The collective narratives sparked a movement, drawing attention to the school's troubled legacy and the broader issue of bullying. Activists and sympathizers rallied, calling for investigations and reforms. The school, once a silent custodian of years of suffering, became the center of a storm of controversy and debate. Amid this turmoil, strange occurrences began to happen around the school. Workers tasked with renovating the building reported inexplicable phenomena. Tools disappearing, strange noises echoing through the halls, and an oppressive feeling of being watched. The most alarming incidents were the sightings of apparitions, resembling figures from the school's past, wandering the corridors and classrooms, as if the building itself was resisting the changes, clinging to its dark history. These incidents, initially dismissed as stress or tricks of the light, became harder to ignore as they increased in frequency and intensity. The renovations were halted when a construction worker disappeared without a trace, only to be found days later in the old auditorium, unharmed but with no memory of how he got there. The school became a focal point for paranormal investigators and the media its haunted reputation growing with each reported incident. Meanwhile, Alex found himself drawn back to the building, feeling a responsibility to confront the lingering spirits and help them find peace. Armed with research on the school's history and a deep desire to break the cycle of pain, he entered the school once more, this time by the light of day determined to face whatever remnants of the past were clinging to the present. Inside, the atmosphere was heavy with the echo of countless footsteps and whispered voices, the residue of decades of unspoken fears and unshed tears. Alex moved through the halls, each step taking him deeper into the heart of the building's memories. The air thick with the anticipation of impending revelations or confrontations. The school, for so long a silent witness to its own grim legacy, now seemed to be speaking directly to him, its halls and rooms pulsating with the energy of untold stories, waiting to be acknowledged and resolved. Alex felt the boundaries between the past and the present blurring, as if the school existed in a timeless state, a nexus where the echoes of history were as real and palpable as the walls that contained them. He reached the auditorium, the epicenter of the school's haunted history, where the fabric of reality seemed thinnest, and the ghosts of the past were closest to the surface. Stepping onto the stage, Alex felt the intensity of the spotlight once again, not as a beacon of fear, but as a symbol of truth, ready to illuminate the darkest corners of the school's past and his own heart, preparing to confront whatever lay hidden in the shadows, seeking closure and perhaps redemption. In the auditorium, the silence was thick, almost tangible, as Alex stood on the stage. The spotlight above him flickered, casting erratic shadows that danced across the room. He could feel the presence of the school's history around him, a palpable force that seemed to breathe and watch his every move. Alex took a deep breath and called out, his voice echoing through the empty space. 
I know you're here. I feel your pain, your anger, and your sorrow. But it's time to let go, to move on from this place. His words hung in the air, and for a moment, there was silence. Then, gradually, a low murmur began to fill the room, like the rustle of leaves in the wind, growing louder, becoming a cacophony of voices, each clamoring to be heard. Figures began to materialize in the seats of the auditorium. Spectral images of students and teachers from different eras. Their features blurred, but their emotions unmistakable. A mix of sadness, rage, and despair. They were the remnants of the school's troubled past, bound to the building by their unresolved agony. Among these figures, Alex recognized the boy from the newspaper clipping, his face sorrowful, but his eyes meeting Alex's with a glimmer of hope. The boy pointed towards the backstage area, his gesture silent but urgent. Driven by the boy's silent plea, Alex moved off the stage and headed backstage. The whispers of the past following his every step, the area behind the curtains, was a labyrinth of props and costumes, each carrying memories of past performances. A stark contrast to the somber reality of the school's history. As he navigated through the clutter, Alex felt a shift in the atmosphere, as if he were moving through a portal into another time. The whispers grew louder and he could now discern individual voices, pleading, threatening, crying out for attention. The air grew colder, and a faint light glowed from a door ajar at the far end of the backstage area. Approaching the door, Alex pushed it open to reveal a small room, cluttered with old furniture and boxes. In the center stood an antique mirror its surface cloudy and worn. The mirror seemed to call to him, its frame pulsating with a strange energy. As Alex peered into the glass, the room behind him, reflected in the mirror, began to change, displaying scenes from the school's history like a movie reel of misery and torment. The mirror showed him the truth behind the school's haunted legacy. Not just the acts of bullying, but the systemic failures and the silence of those who turned a blind eye. It revealed the pain of those who felt unseen and unheard, their spirits lingering, trapped in a cycle of despair. As he watched, the images in the mirror shifted focusing on the boy from the newspaper. His story unfolded, showing not just his suffering, but also his moments of joy and potential, brutally cut short by his untimely disappearance. Alex understood then that the boy's spirit was the key, the linchpin holding together the tangled web of the school's spectral inhabitants. Determined to unravel the mystery, Alex turned from the mirror and headed deeper into the backstage area, guided by an unseen force. The whispers of the past grew more insistent, leading him to an old, forgotten part of the building, where the air was thick with the dust of decades. Here, in the heart of the school's original structure, the atmosphere was charged with energy, as if this were the core from which the school's haunted essence emanated. The walls were lined with old photographs and documents, layers of history that told the story of a place lost to time, yet alive with the echoes of those who had passed through its halls. Alex felt a convergence of emotions, the collective experiences of generations, and at the center of it all was the boy 
his life and disappearance, a nexus around which the school's dark history revolved. To break the cycle, Alex realized, he needed to uncover the truth of what happened, to bring it into the light and give voice to those who had been silenced. As he delved into the forgotten records and pieced together the fragments of the past, the shadows of the school began to stir, as if sensing the impending revelation. The air grew heavier, the whispers louder, and the boundary between the past and present blurred, setting the stage for a confrontation with the darkness that lurked at the heart of the school's legacy. In the bowels of the old school, where the whispers of the past had led him, Alex uncovered the hidden truth behind the boy's disappearance and the school's haunting legacy. The documents he found, long forgotten and covered in dust, told a story of neglect, of a tragedy that had been swept under the rug by those in power. As Alex pieced together the last of the puzzle, the atmosphere in the school shifted. The oppressive energy that had filled the halls began to dissipate and the spectral figures that had roamed the building started to fade, their expressions softening as the truth was finally acknowledged. The boy's spirit, the central figure in this haunting, appeared before Alex, his expression one of relief and gratitude. With the truth revealed, he could finally move on. His presence no longer a tether for the other spirits trapped within the school's walls. As he vanished, the other apparitions followed, their whispers fading into silence, leaving the building feeling just like an ordinary, albeit old, school. Alex, standing alone in the quiet hall, felt a profound sense of peace. He had faced the darkness of the school's past, in doing so, had freed both the spirits and himself from the weight of unspoken history. The school, once a place of fear and sorrow, now stood silent, its halls empty of the haunting that had pervaded them. Leaving the school, Alex knew that while the building's immediate haunting was resolved, the broader issue of bullying and neglect remained. He vowed to use his experience to continue advocating for change, ensuring that no one else would have to endure what he and so many others had faced. The story of the haunted school and Alex's brave confrontation with its past spread far and wide, inspiring others to speak out and confront their own haunted histories. The school itself was eventually renovated and reopened, but with a new focus on understanding and compassion. Its legacy of pain replaced by one of hope and healing. And though the school moved on, the memories of those who had suffered there remained. A reminder of the past's impact on the present. But now, these memories served not as a source of torment, but as a driving force for positive change, a testament to the power of facing and overcoming the darkest of truths. In the end, the true horror was not the ghosts that haunted the school, but the reality of human cruelty and indifference, and the true heroism was not in the vanquishing of specters, but in the courage to confront and rectify the wrongs of the living. Alex's journey through the nightmarish halls of his school had ended, but the story of his fight against the shadows of injustice had just begun. A beacon of light in the darkness, guiding the way toward a better, kinder 
future.